Hi, my name is Nicholas Kral. I'm the product manager for Connect IQ. Welcome to adding a touch of personality to user experience. We're going to start by talking about the history and UI patterns of Garmin products. Then we're going to walk through the new personality system. And then we'll go through an example of how to use it. Let's start with some history and some, uh, some of the UI patterns for Garmin devices. Garmin's been doing user interfaces for devices for 30 years, and we've come a long way since those beginnings. But over time, we've developed some very standard patterns. The traditional Garmin user interface is hierarchical, where views are stacked based on the user selections. Every device has a standard behavior for navigating these selections and then backing out of the hierarchy. These standard behaviors can be different from product to product. Here are some common views. Dialogues are typically a modal screen with a textual message that the user must confirm reading to continue. These can be used for error messages, instructions, or other forms of guidance. Progress bars tell the user to wait for an asynchronous action to complete. There are two styles of progress bars, a standard progress bar that counts from 0% to 100%, and a busy progress bar for when the completion time cannot be quantified. Confirmations are pages to confirm a user action. They can be used to confirm a decision by the user or add a point of friction if the user is exiting a flow. Action views are full screen views of information with an indicator of how to access a contextual menu of available actions. Another common pattern are page loops. Page loops are carousels of views. When the user is in a page loop, the user interface presents views of information that provide different data and insights to the user. There are standard behaviors from going to the next and previous pages. Going to the last page typically loops the user back to the first, forming a loop of information. Page loops are an effective way to get more information that can fit on one screen. There are three common menu types. Action menus are contextual menu for the current view. Action menus usually offer actions the user can do on the current page. Selection menus allow the user to choose between two or more items. These items are presented on a one-dimensional list with optional iconography. Settings menus are typically available from anywhere within the application via the menu behavior. The settings menu typically allows the user to alter global settings for the app. Garmin products can have many kinds of inputs, including touchscreens and or buttons. Touchscreens functions well with indoor environments, but can be difficult to use with gloves, when wet, or when your body is in motion. In some cases, buttons are just better. Here are some common input patterns for Garmin devices. The five button configuration is common on Phoenix and Forerunner products. The bottom left two buttons are used for navigating the interface. Holding the middle left axis is the settings menu. The bottom right button is for going back, and the top right button is to select or functions as a start-stop toggle. Phoenix 7 and Forerunner 955 introduced a new button touch combination. This allows for the interactivity of a touchscreen with the dependability of buttons. Note on these products, you must support both touch and button, and you need to check if the user has disabled the touchscreen. Wellness wearables combine a touchscreen with two navigation buttons. The top button is a start-stop button. Press and holding it accesses the controls menu. The bottom button performs the back behavior. Pressing and holding the back button performs the menu behavior. All other navigation is done with the touchscreen. Because every Garmin product is use case focused, they each have a distinct personality. The personality of the product is a combination of the choices made of the hardware itself and the focus interactions and graphic styling of the software. The use case drives the display technology used for Garmin products. Many Garmin products use a screen technology known as memory and pixel. Memory and pixel displays are very low power because they depend on reflecting light. The display technology is limited in color palette, most supporting up to 64 colors. On these displays, highly saturated colors work best, and subtle color variations can easily be lost unless you're looking at the display in the outdoors. We also have several black and white displays, like on the Edge 130, 130 Plus, and Instinct 2. These displays are highly readable. 
In black and white, using silhouettes and fill patterns often give you the best result. The other common screen technology for Garmin devices is LCD or AMOLED. These offer much more colors and look vibrant, but can also use more power. With AMOLED displays, you want to use light on dark themes, as that will save power. Also, use gradients and subtle background images to liven up the look of your app. On MIP devices, dark on light is context specific and used predominantly during activities to provide better contrast. On edge products, dark on light during daylight hours is for best contrast, but use light on dark during nighttime hours to be easier to read in low light use. And devices with AMOLED or LCD screens use light on dark to extend battery life while still incorporating beautiful imagery onto the user interface. There are two kinds of fonts on Garmin device, the text font and the number font. The text font should be used for textual data and labels, while the number font is used for numerical data. ConnectIQ allows developers to import a typeface into the app and add visual flourish, but system fonts that come with the device have been tested for readability and should be used whenever possible. Products have different ways to indicate how to access the contextual menu. On button products, a button hint is placed next to the physical button to indicate which button causes actions. On touch products, a touchable chevron at the bottom pushes a selection menu of options to the user. Okay, Whew. Uh, I should have listened to my training readiness when it said to take a rest day for my PowerPoint workout. All right, now here's some stuff for the nerds. Connect IQ has provided uh, many tools over the years to help developers add, uh, uh, adapt their apps to new products. These include resource folders, taxonomies, jungles, exclusions, and API abstractions. The resource compiler allows you to import layouts and image assets into your apps. To allow for handling of different products, we have a taxonomy system with our resource folders that you can have resources for all products, products with the same screen shape and or resolution, or specifically for a product. They are prioritized so that you can have global resources, but tailored to a screen shape or product. Jungles are the build configuration system for ConnectIQ. Most build configuration systems revolve around managing software build dependencies, but jungles are really about configuring the dependencies for each device. The jungle language is a lazy evaluated domain specific language to configure resource paths, source paths, and exclusions per product. Jungles can allow you to build your own taxonomies when the ones that we built don't work. Exclusions are decorations you can put on function definitions. In the jungle, you can specify the name of decorations that can be excluded when building for a product or configuration. Then when building, the compiler will eliminate any definition that has been decorated with that name. This allows your code base to have all code for all products, but then eliminate or rewrite definitions for specific products. Has checks are a feature of Monkey C that allow runtime interrogation of the namespace. This lightweight reflection system allows you to have branches based on if a product has an API. When we originally approached the Toybox UI toolkit, we were following toolkits like the Java AWT, Qt, and WX widgets that provided cross-platform abstractions of user interfaces using common APIs. For example, here's our behavior delegate, which we've had since version 1.0, which is supposed to commonize inputs into simple patterns so you don't have to understand how products function at implementation. So with all these tools, we were trying to help it help you support all products with a single code base. But here's my confession. What we weren't prepared for was the rapid rate of UI evolution across our products. As new UI patterns came in, we were busy trying to stuff them into our existing patterns rather than seeing as wholly new. What we should have been doing was trying to help you make apps that worked best on our, our products. The, the product variance is a feature, not a bug, of the Garmin platform. And it's our job to help you adapt your apps. So we're changing direction with our, we're changing the direction of Connect IQ with an approach I summarize as Viva la difference. We want to make it easy for you to have apps that embrace the product personality. 
So that's why we're introducing a system that we're calling personality UI. So what is personality UI? Personality UI is a combination of a device asset library, a property-based style system, and additional product APIs. Let's start with a simple example. Earlier, I mentioned the concept of an action view, which is a view that offers to contextual menus. But the trigger of the contextual menu is different for different product personalities. On the Phoenix 2022 personality, there is a button hint on the right, but in the Venue 2021 personality, it's a touchable chevron. In the resource compiler, we're going to put in the following code. And when we run it, the Phoenix and the Venue are styled appropriately. Pretty cool, right? So how does this work? You'll notice there's a new tag in the resources, the personality attribute. The personality attribute is similar to the style attribute in HTML. The personality attribute allows you to specify a number of personality classes. These personality classes fill in the various attributes of the layout elements, allowing you to abstract your content from your layout. In this case, the action menu bitmap image and the position change based on the product you're building for. In fact, all the selectors change per device. So how are they specified? Let me introduce you to the new domain-specific property language for ConnectIQ, MonkeyStyle. Monkey style, the MonkeyStyle language allows separation between your content and design and will let you place key device-specific properties outside of your core code. These properties will be available in both the resource compiler and in your source code. But spoiler alert, it's basically CSS, but not really. It's like mostly CSS. It's like CSS, but no skips. Let's take a look at some of these selector definitions. As you can see, it's a CSS-esque property language. We've used it to create a standard set of selectors for each device. While I keep saying it's like CSS, I don't want to suggest it has the behemoth language or years of history. This is a domain-specific language, and you'll see it that we've tailored it to monkey C. A personality class is named with a simple identifier shown here. The properties are then listed below. All the personality and property names have to be monkey see legal names. You can assign properties numbers, percents, strings, booleans, colors, symbols, resources, and API constants. You can even or together API constants in this language. Personality classes are designed to be combined. The resource compiler will evaluate them from left to right, allowing later classes to override earlier definitions. In this example, we're combining the light mode system text color, the prompt title size and location, and the font used for prompt titles. For those of you who prefer to avoid the resource compiler, there's something for you too. The style classes import under the res.styles namespace. Each class exposes itself as a module with constant values. On top of all of this, you can create your own personality monkey style file within your, your own selectors. This allows you to combine the personality library with your own brand and build your own design system on top of the personality system. Our goal is to simplify as much of the per product adaptation as possible by giving you both better tooling and a library to start from the minute you download a device from the SDK manager. Having a personality language is all is well and good, but it's a means to the end. So we're building on top of Monkey Style a personality library you can take advantage of in your apps. We're bringing together a standard set of assets into the, person into the personality library. These will have the styling expected on each device. We're bringing in the standard placements for those assets as well, including positions and sizes. Now you can place button hints with a definition rather than finding the coordinates in the sim. We're adding selectors for contextual colors in both light and dark mode so you can match the product personality. We're providing definitions for fonts based on usage context. We're providing definitions for what buttons and for what button and touch areas are used for input. 
Finally, we're moving some of the constant information about the device into the personality library. All of these definitions and assets will come with the device downloaded from the SDK manager and are documented in the new personality library in the SDK. On top of all that, let's go over some of the APIs that we're adding into System 6. These include APIs for action menus, toasts, page loops, menu icons on Instinct 2, and the Phoenix 7 flashlight, and on device reviews. First, we've added a new show action menu in System 6, so developers can have action menus just like native apps. We've added a new Toast API. Toasts take up a small portion of the screen and dismiss after a short time. We have a new API for constructing page loops. By using this API, not only will the system handle page loop input, but it'll use the native page loop indicators. We've added the ability for custom menu items on Instinct 2 to have an icon in the sub-display, and for developers to integrate the, with the Phoenix 7 flashlight. And we ha now have new APIs to request that the user review your app on device. To trigger an app review, you must do the following steps. Wait for the user to be in a good place in your app, but you should monitor the positive experience that they've been having and make sure they're in a good place in your flow. You can use Watch UI Make Review Token Request to request a review token. This is an asynchronous operation and the system may prevent a review. When you get a token, pass the token to Watch UI Start User Review to trigger the on-device flow. Look, when I said we were changing our approach, I really meant it. So let me take you through a small sample of using the personality system. I've shown you how to, uh, to make an action view that lays itself out based on the product personality, but how do you handle the input? The trigger for an action menu is different between products, and we have to handle both button and touch triggers. If, if the button, or so in the button handler, we're checking if the personality has a button, and if it does, we're gonna trigger the action menu if the button in the event matches the button in the personality. But the has check has an extra bonus. For those of you who participated in Mary Ann's talk, the new compiler can evaluate has checks of program space definitions at compile time, and the optimizer can eliminate branches when it evaluates the expression at compile time. This means at compile time, this entire if statement can be eliminated if the personality doesn't have a button definition. For touch input, we're going to check to see if the input has a bounding box, and then test if our coordinate is in the touch area for action menus. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, that looks really janky, and it could be totally rewritten in a reusable way. I mean, this is a dynamic language. But I'm going to say don't do this, and here's why. Personality classes are designed to take advantage of the new optimized compiler, and specifically lexical-only constants. This allows them to be defined without adding any runtime costs. If you reference these symbols dynamically, the compiler can't eliminate them at compile time, and worse, it'll have to make the personality modules part of your runtime executable. In conclusion, what we've added is an across-the-board change for ConnectIQ user interface development. With monkey style, you get a tool to create your own design language on top of the ConnectIQ tools. We're building out a library of assets, layouts, and definitions for System 6 products for you to use. Finally, we've added a new set of APIs so you can really take full advantage of the product. You can try this system with the new System 6 SDK beta and with the preview System 6 devices. Okay, Jeff, camera, back on me. Because this is not just a conclusion, it's a beginning. What we have in the System 6 beta is just a start. We want your input to know what you want added to the system. Please help us make your lives better. Thank you.